First of all, Dr. Sagan will present us today the overview of terahertz frequency radiation detection and potential applications. Professor Dr. Sagan, the floor is yours. Thank you. Before to start, I would like to express my thanks uh, to Professor Marian Marciniak to host me here. Uh, I am not first time, as I mentioned it, uh, before. Uh, I am happy from my collaboration with Professor Marciniak, and we have uh, many publications and participation in different conferences. And I hope that our cooperation will be continuous in the same uh, activities in the same level. Um, can I start uh, today my presentation about the terahertz? Um, as you see, this is the building of our university. Uh, the next one is the capital of Armenia, Yerevan. And, uh, and on the view of the Bible mountain, Ararat. Uh, Ararat is uh, 5,000 meters above on the sea. Yerevan, 800 meters above on the sea. And this is only the flat part of <coughs> Armenia, the small Armenia would now exist. Other parts, 95% uh, are mountains, but not so high as Ararat. Ararat is now in Turkey because there is a river and border of Soviet Union was created on the, this river. And this Ararat mountain now in Turkey. Yerevan is capital, there is a one million population and uh, all in Armenia, we have only 3 million population. Uh, six or seven million Armenians are living outside of Armenia for the some historical reasons. Today, I would like to speak about the spectrum of electromagnetic waves and uh, to show that there was a small part of terahertz uh, what was unexploited and unused uh, so much before, but now it uh, coming uh, to the very high interest in all our work. And uh, as it is uh, not so good knowledge about these terahertz, we are not so familiar, uh, I am thankful for suggesting to give this type presentation to Marian Marciniak uh, because I would like to know also what is the terahertz and how we can use it. Uh, the terahertz is the last part of spectrum that uh, unexploited was till now. And the main reason was that difficulty in generating of intense intense uh, directional terahertz radiation and frequency sensitive detectors. But now optoelectronics approaches to this range based on modern lasers, nanotechnology, as well as, as well as high power electronic emitters. All these have helped to bridge the terahertz gap. Unusual applications are coming from the terahertz waves due to the specific propagation abilities through different media. Uh, for example, materials like uh, synthetics, textiles, paper, cardboard are transparent uh, to the terahertz waves. Many gases and organic solids, including toxic or explosive substances, show absorption lines in frequency between 0.15 terahertz. Thus, many applications of terahertz radiation are related either to imaging that obtain like tomography or some image, uh, what is visible to the people, or uh, terahertz spectroscopy what permit to know what is the inside or what is in this gas. And the last, the third one is terahertz communication. Uh, and uh, I would like during this presentation to give these three areas of terahertz application. But before we will speak about uh, the uh, important uh, point of view for the terahertz, there is a attenuation of terahertz in atmosphere. Because sometimes we are thinking that 
terahertz is coming, but we not feel it. Maybe it is like electromagnetic waves, uh, others, we don't feel no one, but they coming. I can say we are safety because it's very big attenuation we have for the terahertz. For comparison, here is the visible range. You see, uh, the atmosphere is uh, almost uh, transparent. And here is, uh, for example, microwave, etc. But uh, terahertz is, uh, have very strong attenuation, and uh, the reason is the humidity, water. The humidity is accept terahertz very s strong, and it not permit to propagate. That means we have not here terra gears waves that coming without our knowledge. We know that it cannot to propagate far. But this is killing the telecommunication application because it cannot propagate very far. Uh, and it can be used only for the close telecommunication, not far, like a Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi. And the first part of my lesson is directed to the generation of electromagnetic wave of high frequency approaching to the terahertz. And uh, the closing electronic one is tunneling diodes. Uh, tunnel diodes are known very f as high frequency device when uh, there is uh, electrons can propagate through the uh, barriers and uh, in some places, some energy cases, it can be tunneling where the negative slope of ampere volts, uh, some uh, graphic is uh, appeared. When we have this negative slope, it means that is possible the generation. It is like a negative resistivity. And this makes the possibility to have uh, some uh, generation on uh, tunneling uh, diodes, but uh, they can work only till 700 gigahertz not uh, so close to the terahertz. Uh, and uh, less useful are uh, other diodes known like uh, gun diodes. This is uh, special semiconductor devices. There is no uh, some uh, change between the positive and negative. It is only negative type or positive type, but also they have negative uh, slope and it's possible to generate electromagnetic waves, but only till the 500 gigahertz. The another possibility to obtain the terahertz was direct optical pulse excitation of semiconductor. Some semiconductors uh, are possible to excite the terahertz, and it depends from the parameter of the semiconductor. This is so-called photoconductic effect. <clears throat> the, the first application was given by Grishkovsky, maybe he is a Polish person, but he is from USA, uh, that application for the photoconducting effect in gallium arsenide. In gallium arsenide, when you put the metallic layers and to illuminate by very short laser pulses here, you can obtain the current and it, it will be emitted terahertz. Like antenna, if you have uh, two wires and between them you will have some electric uh, current, in this case the antenna will be excited and to transmit. But antenna will be very small uh, because the wavelength is very small. It might be millimeters or less than millimeters. And they prepare it. And here is the scheme of uh, uh, excitation by the photoconducting effect. Uh, here is a femtosecond laser pulses coming to this uh, semiconductor. The semiconductor is connected to the antenna. Antenna transmit, it is uh, not antenna, it is, I can say, nano antenna or micro antenna. It is very small. And after, on some distances, not so big, it's possible to accept the signal. And uh, the light is propagated also, laser light, by having uh, phase matching uh, of uh, phase. In this case, the detection will be much more efficient. And here are example these nano antennas, what are exciting different optical wavelengths, uh, lambda one and lambda two. In this case, the beating 
between those very close frequencies permit to obtain the terahertz by exciting this uh, gap between the metallic parts of two antennas. This is dipole. Here also another construction of dipole. And here is the so-called bow tie antenna, what is also excited by two uh, optical uh, lasers. And here another principle of obtaining this uh, uh, terahertz, it is difference frequency generation when we have again two lasers, uh, pulse lasers, and when we have mixer, and the mixer give us the low frequency between them, beating frequency, and beating frequency is uh, close to the terahertz, and terahertz can be transmit. Uh, and here is the beating medium, that means gallium-selen, uh, gallium where the terahertz is excited. The pulses are small, nanosecond, picoseconds. Here is the explanation of the techniques of this terahertz excitation. Here is the laser, different frequencies. Here is the beating. And here is the semiconductor, what is generate, generate the uh, terahertz. And terahertz can be obtained the same semiconductor by the as a photoconductive effect. Here is the picture, again, explanation of this, that here optical bead coming to this antenna, and here is a photoconductor antenna, and uh, silicium hemisphere, it is give some possibility to make uh, easier to transmit terahertz. Here is another possibility, again, by using the laser. It is a femtosecond laser. It is a little bit big one. And in this case, uh, the optical rectification, it is the process that some semiconductors, for example, zinc tellur, uh, can be excited and to give uh, at output terahertz what can be detected here. Uh, for this rectification uh, work, uh, with uh, Professor Marian Marciniak and our colleagues, we performed performed uh, computer modeling when this semiconductor is uh, put it between uh, two mirrors, multi-layer mirrors. That means we created fabry perot interferometer. In this case, it's possible to obtain enhanced efficiency of terahertz transmission uh, when we pump it by optical light. It was uh, pure modeling. And we consider many types of interferometers. Here is the permittivity of gallium-phosphor, and here is the permittivity of uh, multi-layers. And we obtain the uh, amplification or generation uh, by this configuration. And this is uh, presented on the conference in Armenia, and we will present also on the conference of ICTON 2015 in Budapest. Uh, now, a very promising system exists for the terahertz, uh, integrable, uh, integrability, that means to make short uh, system of terahertz excitation, it is multiplication. Uh, that means here is an uh, input, here is coming gigahertz, for example, 100 gigahertz. Here is Schottky varactor diodes. Schottky diode, it is semiconductor metal contact. When you, you put the gigahertz on this contact, it generates terahertz. Um, and uh, this uh, terahertz can be multiplied in this system, and uh, it can be go out. This is very promising construction, and they are very small and efficient terahertz emitters. Uh, the next uh, small terahertz emitters are so-called quantum cascade tunneling lasers. Uh, they are very complicated in preparation because a lot of cleaved facet multi-layer, nano-layers. And in this case, it's possible to obtain terahertz very narrow band radiation, uh, but uh, it's very expensive devices. Uh, the new one, what we obtained during this uh, overview of literature, is possibility to use surface plasmons. If this here prism, uh, when we pump it optically, it is possible to obtain field enhancement 
on this uh, part. It is so-called Kleshman configuration. And a specific angle of surface waves, when here is surface waves appear, when we put their uh, semiconductor special, it's possible to obtain terriers. It's published by authors from Japan. It is very interesting work, and we would like with Marianne Marciniak to go in this way, also consider the nonlinearity of plasmons, uh, and maybe to do some work in future. Close. Here about the detectors. Here is the first and all detectors is Gole, it is the name of person, a cell. Uh, that means when terriers come here, here is uh, some absorber, and here is the gas. The gas is uh, increase his volume, and here is the membrane, and the membrane is uh, optically diagnostic, monitored, and by change the, uh, the position of membrane, it's possible to know how many energy is uh, come here, but it's very slow one. It is like a slow system for the detection only, but we don't know about the wavelength. But now they are very fast operating uh, photoconducting sampling. That means if you have small part of semiconductors, uh, for here the main part is gallium phosphor, when the terriertis comes, uh, depending from the thickness of these metals, germanium, aurum, uh, and uh, the gallium phosphor conditions, you can check the coming electromagnetic wave, terahertz, and uh, to obtain here the uh, information, for example, by using uh, some uh, milliampere meter or something like this. And here is the photoconductive terahertz emitters and detectors. Uh, before, when I said Grishkovsky, it was suggested to have this type of antenna that is metallic part, and here is the gap, uh, and there is a semiconductor, put it on semiconductor. When the light is calm, the antenna is radiate terahertz. Here is the light is calm, and antenna terahertz radiation exists. And opposite is operate also when we put uh, some uh, device uh, checking the current. The terahertz is coming, here appeared the current, and the current uh, we can check and to obtain information that there is an electromagnetic wave is come. And this is a resonant structure because the size, sizes of antenna is uh, related to the wavelength of coming electromagnetic wave, like in usual antenna. And we can know the wavelength of coming terriers. And here is the important part of terahertz pulses. When we have a pulse of terahertz, it is possible to obtain his spectrum. And we know that if has this spectrum, when he go and to change the shape of the pulse, it the same like to change the spectrum. And by changing the pulse shape or by, by checking the spectrum change, we can know in what medium propagate the riots. This is used for the so-called uh, time domain spectroscopy in terahertz. When we are uh, sending terahertz, here is the sample, uh, we can check the pulse shape change or spectrum change and know what is this sample uh, exists, what there is, what materials. This is very good application. For example, here, if you have leaf, it is uh, well hydratized here, hyper dehydratized, that means dried leaf. When you have a uh, normal leaf, you have a shape change. It is big absorption because attenuation of water in leaf uh, attenuate the pulse. When you have a dried, it is very okay. That means uh, no change. You can transmit the electromagnetic wave. But it has a very important application in medicine. For example, here you put the tablet or the medicine and you can see what is inside. For example, here is a false drug, he is a normal drug, and that means if you have a, some plastic and there is a put no, normal drug, uh, we can check it by terahertz and know this is okay or not. Mm, not opening the back, because it's transparent for the terahertz. It's very good application. Here is another application, uh, like a, 
face spectroscopy that we can manage the person but his terahertz radiation. And uh, for some disease, we can obtain the picture what is uh, characteristic for this disease. And maybe it can help uh, medicines uh, to know what type of disease have this person, only uh, one moment to screening it. But it's not dangerous. It is not X-ray, and we can screen very easy and very fast and to know what is the reason of his ill. Here is a possibility to check skin, to check uh, tooth, uh, because uh, when there is a humidity, it cannot propagate. But when there is a dry, it can propagate. And uh, in the tooth, we have no water, and it's very easy to propagate, and we can check the condition of tooth. And here is the skin, for example. And here is the device, hand device, that is possible to consider the uh, upper levers of the skin of the hand, uh, but no deeply because there is a blood and there is a humidity and there is a high uh, attenuation, only for the surface. And here again the tooth. Here is a, one very important application like a lidar, we know like a lidar, when we sending terahertz and the comes back spectrum are checking and by checking the spectrum by absorption lines, we can know what materials are in flame. Or it's possible to know what materials are on the person. It is uh, some explosives or not. That means distance spectroscopy. We can do it. Here is the tomography that realized for the terahertz. You see here is a plastic cylinder. There is inside another plastic cylinder, but it's not visible for us. But when we transmit the uh, electromagnetic waves, uh, terahertz region, we can see that there is a, another plastic one inside of this cylinder. That non-visible, it creates for us the visible. And here, a very also technical and um, application of terahertz. For example, if you have a battery, you can open it, but you can know what is inside in what condition are the electrode, or if you have uh, some uh, car you or some other device when there is uh, no water, you can know the what is inside of it, how many levers, what thickness, what uh, permittivity is inside, that you can check everything without some damaging. And here is a possibility to use this application for the security, is transmission modes, that means you have a box, you don't know what is inside. You can transmit terahertz and to see the picture what is inside. And here is the woman with dress and there is explosives. You can obtain in a reflection the spectrum and by the spectrum you can find what explosive she has with her. Or here is explosive behind the wall. And here is a possibility to see without cloth, that means what is under the cloth. Here is a knife, for example, non visible for us, but we can see it. Here is a weapons on the person, non visible in the dress. Here is a, some back, we can see inside what we have. And here is a possibility to check the envelopes, what is in the envelope without opening it. And uh, now, also very important application for dry earth, the land mines, because electromagnetic wave of terahertz can propagate in the desert very well when there is uh, no water and very deep, and we can obtain information about the mines. And here is the last, I am approaching to the finish, it is terahertz communication. Uh, terahertz communication is possible to have at the uh, building, uh, the room, uh, and in this case you can have uh, some um, alternative to the Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, but this alternative is promising because frequency is higher than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is some gigahertz, and here can be 100 terahertz or uh, 10 terahertz or terahertz. In this case you can have must fast communication. That means the prospectives is coming only to a po possibility to have fast communication in terahertz region. But this is uh, uh, under the 
some creation. It is not so created now. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Nice. The direction for these new technologies and the broad spectrum of uh, potential applications. If there are any questions, please ask to Professor Dr. Savian. I have one uh, idea, maybe something, uh, you know, close uh, to the uh, topics of, uh, you know, uh, 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 <coughs> plasma, plasma research, yeah? You know, what uh, do I mean? Yes. Uh, uh, something like uh, maybe microsynthesis and uh, plasma excitation, maybe something like, you know, can be, uh, can be also common, yeah, for the terahertz. Uh, the plasmas and the terahertz. Uh, your question something to you know, the come on to the to the plasma. And this is the question is like the plasma physics or physics, yeah. Hydrodynamic hydrodynamics. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah, something like uh, plasma heating and something uh, similar to this one. Um, how to say, I have experience in uh, plasma investigation by electromagnetic yes. waves. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, plasma, like a metal, not permit to propagate electromagnetic waves because there are a lot of free electrons. Yes. And when we trying uh, to push electromagnetic wave in a plasma, it thermalizes it, yes. the uh, energy of electron increase, this brings extra additional ionization. That means it creates like a mirror. Uh, that means uh, I uh, work on this array by trying to uh, penetrate through the plasma. Yes. Unfortunately, when you hit the plasma by electromagnetic waves, you obtain opposite results. It will be much more uh, free electrons. It will be much more like metallic, and it will be much more reflect. Yes. That means uh, it is impossible, and your question may be related to the terahertz, to the plasma. Yes, you know, something like uh, huh. relations. Uh, there is a relation. Influences. Uh, but uh, the plasma is, uh, depends what plasma you mean. If you have, for example, atmospheric plasma, it is like a flame. For example, candle or uh, fire flame. And when you have a flame, uh, the light is not propagated so well. Uh, but uh, I don't know how to write. Yeah, it can be, you know, in, in yes, this is the question. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Yes. Jan Wisko from the Institute of Electron Technology. I have a question related, you have mentioned about nano antennas. Yes. What do you think about possibility of application nano antennas for acquisition energy from the uh, sunlight, uh, like the uh, uh, photo, mm -hmm. photo detectors, sort of, uh, photonics. Yes. I, I, up to 10 micrometers of wavelength. Is it possible now? I have read that uh, the expected efficiency should reach about 85% in comparison to photonic devices, mm -hmm. which, uh, which we have many layers of, of photonic de devices, uh, they have only up to 40% uh, percent of uh, efficiency. What do you think about what, what difficulties are in this area? Thank you. Uh, my knowledge about the rectification, obtaining the energy of uh, solar by using the nano antenna is very optimistic. In uh, point of view that there is a no semiconductor, it is metals, and uh, there is a no need uh, to uh, work with quantum mechanics. That means the nano antenna is the like uh, same antenna as the big antenna related to the wavelength. It is the nano antenna means that if you have a wavelength small, the uh, antenna will be also comparable. Uh, every time when we have telecommunication, the wavelength is comparable to the antenna size. And when we go to the solar energy or uh, some infrared energy, 
If we can prepare with small antenna, it will be accept this energy very well. But the problem is uh, that there is no restriction like in semiconductor. In semiconductor, there is a restriction no more than uh, 40%. 35, it is maximum. It is shockly uh, formula, etc. And we cannot because there is a, a quantum effect. It is uh, make free electrons from the, between the band. But in metals, we have no this type. And the antenna is possible to create. And now, as I know, they are creating this type windows uh, covering by these antennas and have some uh, collection of the energy. The only problem is uh, nanotechnology. The problem is how to prepare these antennas on the glass or the, some other substrate uh, because there is a clear nanotechnology. It will be good metal and it will be very small size and you can have a possibility to connect every antenna to each other. And uh, it will operate on the open uh, space. And uh, now only the technological problems, how to prepare. But expectation is very good. I, I'm thinking that it's very good uh, to have this type antennas for the collection of energy. Infrared and visible and, but only the technological problem. I think this is the problem related to the, what other people call uh, approaching this uh, metamaterials, mm -hmm. which uh, are artificial structures of the uh, size of uh, the wavelength and which uh, uh, become the surface of the material behave very strangely like uh, some maybe invisible in principle. Uh, but the difficulty lies in the fact that the, this should meet the wavelength which is of the order of microns or Yes. Or, or in the case, the case of terahertz is more, which makes the things easier. More, yeah. I believe Marius has good experience because Marius, you mm. prepared some C-shaped structures in Tampa in your PhD. Perhaps you can. Uh, well, with, with relation to use of these structures in in sound collection energy, uh, there has been many trials already, and there's many works about this topic. However these methods seem to be not very efficient yet, uh, mainly due to strong absorption of metals. If you want to load strongly any kind of a material with metal nanoparticles, they just behave as absorber. So I think more efficient ways right now is just to transfer the optical energy into heat and then use the thermal effects to excite some electrons maybe. And uh, I don't know. If this answers any of, of the questions. However, there's there's plenty of works. I, I had nothing to do with the sun energy myself, so I'm just advised to go for some literature and try to find any relevant information there. Let me comment also the previous question about plasma physics. Perhaps there is some link with terahertz, which is plasmonics. Plasmonics are surface waves, which are due to oscillations of free electrons with the frequency of uh, electromagnetic wave, in this case in, in terahertz. So Professor Bagdasarian is an expert investigating pl plasmonic waves in optical frequencies, and hopefully in terahertz it will be possible as well. So th this is how terahertz might be connection mm -hmm. to plasma, free electron plasma. More questions, please? If not, let's thank Professor Dr. Senna again. Thank you.